when we speak of creativity, we might see creative geniuses like Steve Jobs working in his garage on technology that will revolutionize the world. Walt Disney creating the most colorful fictional worlds or Dave Chappelle spitting out another masterpiece for his next comedy show. Well, and when we're sitting at our desk, the creative process may seem something like this. Today is all about what we can learn from the most creative minds. We'll first chat about the two types of creative thinking and then give five and a half practical tips inspired by people like Elon Musk, the CIA or Hemingway who demonstrated how it's done so you can boost your creativity yourself. Hey there, I'm happy to have you here for another video. I'm Eva from the FlowLab team. FlowLab is a mental fitness app dedicated to helping you achieve more flow states with guided meditations. If you want to give it a try, you can get 50% off the yearly subscription. All instructions are in the description below. Also, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll release a new video every Friday. From an evolutionary perspective, those who loved exploring and inventing were also better prepared to deal with unpredictability that threatened their survival. Creativity is how we make progress, how we find solutions for problems and new ways to look at old questions. It can spark our passion and helps us think beyond our rusty, rigid thinking patterns. Without creativity, we would live without Davies and Edison's light bulb, without the benefits of interconnectedness through the internet. We wouldn't be able to enjoy ourselves and get inspired by music, art or poetry, and you wouldn't be able to watch this video on your laptop or smartphone right now. Well, creativity is based on already existing knowledge, or in other words, we cannot create something from nothing. Creativity is the boundary between what we already know and what we haven't thought about yet. So it's always preceded by an information collection process. And then this information is processed in two different creativity modes, divergent and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking refers to brainstorming, thinking big, outside the box, adopting different angles and producing many different ideas. Da Vinci, for example, left over 6,000 pages of notes and drawings and most probably used divergent thinking to come up with various solutions for one problem. But creativity doesn't only require a daydreamer's mind, but also focus and persistence to bring all these facts and ideas together. That's where convergent thinking comes into play. So finding and honing the single best solution to a problem. You'll need a more analytical approach and maintain a deep focus. Let's take a look at how brilliant minds got there. The CIA used the image of a wolf to describe that you need to be as brave as a wolf to push yourself out of your comfort zone into the unknown and get inspired by other occupations. They invited Hollywood screenwriters and magicians to learn more about storytelling and cognitive biases to not only get to know specific tips, but also learn how to challenge one's familiar thought patterns. But allowing yourself to let go of the things you think have proven right in the past requires you to not be afraid of making mistakes. So although it became only half a tip, most importantly, you need to allow yourself to let go of perfectionism. We're trained to always look for the correct answer, but when it comes to creativity, we're exploring the unexplored. We don't have to be right, we have to be innovative. It's not about proving what you already know, it's about finding out how far we can think outside the box, how far-fetched our ideas can become. So let your ideas suck. You'll be able to evaluate and adapt them later. The first phase is simply about generating ideas. We also have videos on how to reduce perfectionism. Just check out the link in the info box. This one facilitates your divergent thinking and is on Ernest Hemingway, who stopped his writing sessions in the midst of a sentence. It's as Stephen Kotler, best-selling author and founder of the Flow Research Collective, aptly described in his book, The Art of Impossible. By quitting when you're excited, you're carrying momentum into the next day's work session. What's behind this approach is the Zygarnik effect, which shows that unfinished work sticks to the mind. 
Psychologist Cy Garnick gave 164 participants different creative tasks, such as nading an animal, drawing a flower, crocheting or the like. While participants were allowed to finish some tasks, they were interrupted in the middle of others. Afterwards, they had to indicate which of the tasks they remembered. The result? Unfinished tasks remained up to 90% better in the memory. Our brain is wired to reduce uncertainty and close these open loops. Dopamine gets pumped into the system that motivates us to solve uncertain situations, to explore and to take risks. Ideally, the brain thus generates new ideas, even if they haven't reached conscious awareness yet. So sleep over your problem and literally consult your pillow. When it comes to productivity, a wandering mind is deemed debilitating in most cases. Creativity research, however, teaches us that there are also benefits of defocused attention. Apparently, an open, wandering mind aids in generating new and more far-fetched ideas. This is not meant as an invitation to just spend an hour on TikTok when you're stuck, rather to deliberately plan a session of intentional mind wandering. One of the most popular examples is probably Einstein, who imagined riding beside a sunbeam to the edge of the universe when working on his theory of relativity. Elon Musk says he gets his best ideas under the shower. And the company Patagonia, that is located at the Pacific Ocean, even has the policy, let my people go surfing. They ensure both innovativeness and work-life balance for their employees by allowing them to leave at any time during their workday to jump into the waves and go surfing. The basic idea behind all of these examples is to let your mind roam freely around a certain question or problem while engaging in another routine activity that ideally doesn't require too much concentration. For most of us, this can also be doing our household chores or walking the dog. But remember that creativity requires existing knowledge, so this one is only useful for topics that were already being mentally chewed on. You can also integrate that into your daily mental fitness routine with our flow session intentionally left blank in the training area of focus that is dedicated to training purposeful and productive mind wandering. I think 50% of my master thesis was written in various cafes, the other half from my kitchen floor, on a pillow next to the heater, or from the top of my commode. If you need to shift your perspective, well, literally shift your perspective. New and stimulating environments can help you generate new ideas too. Big companies like Google, Facebook or Pixar are known for their colorful and playful work environments. And did you know that the first ideas for Harry Potter were born when J.K. Rowling was stuck for hours on a train? Since she didn't have a pen at hand, she developed the image of a boy wizard in her mind. What if we seek these unusual places more intentionally for the sake of our creativity? Or if we aren't free to choose our work environment, perhaps we can at least make it more stimulating. There are many studies on the optimal work environment for creativity, some of them being summarized in the meta-analysis by Meinl and colleagues. For example, doodle spaces that are equipped with toys or other inspiring artifacts have been found to increase creativity since people interact with these objects during their brainstorming sessions. A view beyond the immediate setting also has been shown to increase creative potential. And good news for all plant lovers, creative performance was significantly higher when a plant was in the room compared to no objects or magazines. So go ahead and explore which surroundings have potential to make you an idea generation machine. If you need to come up with creative ideas, you should put yourself into a good mood because there is a ton of research emphasizing that a positive mood facilitates creative thinking. For example, the broaden and build theory of positive emotions explains that positive emotions broaden our so-called momentary thought action repertoire. In other words, we broaden our focus and become more explorative. Other studies on the heart rate variability found that positive emotions resulted in a more coherent pattern of the heart's rhythm. 
the researchers assume this to be the basis for creativity, innovation and even more flow. Also, the anterior cingulate cortex seems to be conducive and active right before spontaneous creative insights, also called eureka moments. And this brain area gets activated by, you can already guess it, good mood. So, for example, turn up your favorite happy playlist before working on creative tasks. Research is on your side. Alternatively, you can go for our mood boosting flow sessions such as thank me later to appreciate all the things you can be grateful for or mountaintop to acknowledge your accomplishments and increase your self-efficacy beliefs. Okay, but I don't want to urge you to be positive when you're not. In fact, for some tasks, negative emotions can be useful too, particularly for convergent thinking tasks. There are great pieces of music, for example, that evolved out of painful emotions. In the documentary A Head Full of Dreams, Chris Martin from Coldplay shares that their album Ghost Stories was written after his marriage with Gwyneth Paltrow fell apart. Psychologically speaking, negative activating moods such as anger or even anxiety can make individuals more creative because of higher cognitive persistence, so their focus narrows and they persist longer. Just to be clear, this doesn't mean you should intentionally put yourself in a negative mood for the sake of creativity. It just means that one way you may regulate yourself when angry or frustrated, for example, and to turn that into something positive is to use them as a valve and work on a creative task that requires your entire focus. Something where you don't need to come up with new ideas, but would rather benefit from shaping an idea, challenging assumptions and think yourself deeply into the topic. You can see these emotions as some kind of emotion regulation tool to channel your energy towards your goal. This does not include negative deactivating emotions like sadness, hopelessness or boredom, for example. So use this with caution, but I found this an interesting finding that I didn't want to withhold from you. The American writer and poet Maya Angelou rents a hotel room equipped with no more than a bed, a table and a bath and asks the housekeeping not to enter the room. She never sleeps there but arrives around 6.30 to spend the entire morning working with deep focus. Indeed, being able to concentrate deeply is crucial when working on convergent thinking tasks. So for problems that have one best fitting solution, you can train your focus. Studies suggest that convergent thinking benefits from focused attention meditation. For example, find a focus point, a visual focus point in your environment or your breath and hold your attention there for as long as possible. Whenever you catch yourself being distracted, just notice that without any judgment and consciously bring your attention back to the focus point. You may start with a few minutes a day and gradually increase the amount over time. In the focus training area of the FlowLab app, you'll also find the flow session to boost your focus, such as push-up routine or deep now. I hope you got some new inspiration on how to approach your creative tasks. Let us know in the comments if you try any of these tips and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Every bit of support means a lot to us. I'll also link an article from the FlowLab magazine on creativity below if you want to have even more science-based tips on how to become more creative. Keep it up and see you soon.